Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Weekly Report. Don't trade real liberty for phony security. Authoritarian politicians wasted no time using the recent shootings in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, Texas, to justify new infringements on liberty. Just days after the Buffalo shootings, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a law creating new domestic terrorism offices in the FBI, the Justice Department, and the Department of Homeland Security. This is a step toward achieving the longstanding goal of many progressives of focusing the national security state on domestic terrorists and right-wing extremists. Supporters of these efforts have used the Buffalo Shooter's mention of replacement theory in his manifesto to attack prominent conservative commentators, most notably Tucker Carlson. Carlson and others are accused of spreading the replacement conspiracy theory because they have pointed out that the left has for years celebrated the coming replacement of the white majority population. The goal is to stigmatize, intimidate, and even criminalize those expressing views or facts that contradict the cultural Marxist or the Democrat Party establishment. Painting the Buffalo shooter as a conservative requires ignoring his self-description as an environmental fascist and his disdain for the Fox News conservatism. The mainstream media also ignores the shooter's use of the same neo-Nazi symbol used by the Ukrainian Azov Brigade. This may be because they do not want the American people to realize that their tax dollars are supporting actual Nazis in Ukraine. The push to use the police state against right-wing extremists is supported by many progressives who correctly oppose the national security state's civil liberties abuses of Muslim and other minorities. Conversely, many conservatives who have defended all infringements on liberty done in the name of the global war on terror correctly oppose federal crackdown on right-wing extremists. Both sides fail to realize that a violation of any individual liberty is a threat to everyone's liberty. The massacre of 19 school children and two teachers in Uvalde, Texas, was followed by calls for expanded gun controls from President Biden and other prominent politicians. Among the proposals floated are a renewed push for federal red flag laws. Red flag laws allow law enforcement to take someone's guns without due process based on a mere allegation that an individual poses a threat or violent behavior. Despite being unconstitutional, easily abused, and ineffective at stopping violent crime, red flag laws enjoy broad bipartisan support. For example, former President Donald Trump endorsed a policy of take the guns first, worry about due process later. If Congress was serious about protecting liberty and security, they would pass Kentucky Representative Thomas Massey's legislation repealing the Gun-Free School Zones Act of 1990. This poorly worded law leaves children defenseless against mass shooters who are not dissuaded from their evil intentions by gun-free zone signs. Video showing the Uvalde police not only standing around outside the school, but tasering parents who were trying to protect their children reinforces the importance of allowing school personnel to protect themselves and their students by carrying firearms. Expanding the police state to monitor right-wing extremism and giving the government new powers to deny law-abiding individuals access to firearms make us less safe and less free. Instead of allowing politicians to use mass shootings as an excuse to further expand their powers, we must insist they repeal all federal laws that trade real liberty to phony security starting with the USA Freedom Act. 
previously known as the USA Patriot Act and the so-called Safe and Gun-Free Schools Act. Thanks for listening.